from the possible location of Noah's Ark to a Roman baby disposal that proves the Romans were actual savages, plus the origin of apples, here are 10 amazing archaeological discoveries Noah's Ark found. Topping off today's list of amazing archaeological discoveries is Noah's Ark. That's right, I'm talking about the infamous Ark from the Bible. According to a recent article from The Sun, experts believe they have snapped underground images of what could be Noah's Ark in eastern Turkey. The images in question appear to show something that could be a boat buried beneath rock near some mountains. As you can imagine, skeptics are not convinced, and to be quite honest, the photos really do just look like a ship-shaped rock. But a lot of other people are 100% behind the find. The pictures of the supposed Ark were obtained by sending electrical signals underground using cables, and it's true it does kinda look like a giant boat in the collected images. According to the legend, Noah is the guy who loaded two of every animal onto a giant Ark in the early chapters of the Bible to save them all from apocalyptic flooding. And in the book of Genesis, eastern Turkey is in fact the region in which Noah's Ark eventually stops after the Great Flood. There are obviously a million things wrong with the legend if you want to look at it factually, but if there is indeed a massive boat hidden under the rock, it would be one heck of a phenomenal coincidence. Have you ever dug up something unique in your own backyard? Perhaps an old bullet casing or even an old gas can from decades ago? Some people might have even found something valuable. It can happen. There is often treasure in the most unexpected places. Let me know in the comments, then subscribe if you haven't already. More exciting videos are coming out every day and you won't want to miss them. The First Leper Back in 2009, researchers discovered the very first case of leprosy. For those that don't know, leprosy is basically the zombie disease. We've pretty well eradicated it from the world, but for thousands of years it was a very terrible disease that caused horrible skin lesions all over the sufferer. Leprosy is now curable, but for most of human history, lepers were ostracized and forced out of their own communities. Now, scientists have the bones of the very first one, or at least it's the oldest known to us so far. The skeleton is 4,000 years old and it was found in India. A new study shows that it bears the earliest archaeological evidence of leprosy ever. Not only that, but it's the first evidence of the disease being in prehistoric India. It's giving scientists a bit of insight into how the nasty disease spread across early human history. It's now believed that the disease likely originated in Africa and then spread out of Africa around 40,000 years ago, where it eventually eclipsed the entire human population. This isn't really revolutionary science, but it's still impressive that they found such an old leper in India. Oh yeah, and they found it buried in Rahastan. In Hindu tradition, the only people who are buried are outcasts, pregnant women, young children, victims of magic, victims of curses, and of course, lepers. Desert Kites Desert kites are not what they sound like. These are actually ancient stone structures from about 6,000 years ago that were found in the Middle East. They were named desert kites because they kind of look like kites, but in fact, these weird stone formations were used to funnel migrating gazelles into traps where they would then be killed and ultimately butchered. This is according to a new study discussed in National Geographic. One of the best examples of desert kites is at an archaeological site in northeastern Syria. There are stone walls constructed that funneled wild animals into giant killing pits. It's basically like building low walls to force animals to fall into a giant pit full of spikes. This is the Middle Eastern equivalent to the North American indigenous people driving buffalo off the edges of its cliffs. It's another very early example of mass killing strategies employed by the earliest humans. It may be some of the earliest evidence of the extirpation of large animals in the Middle East, even before the invention of firearms in the 20th century. Headless Vikings Vikings just aren't that scary without their heads, but a pile made of Viking heads would be terrifying. A recent archaeological discovery in Britain has unveiled a massive burial pit full of executed Vikings. Roughly 50 skeletons were found inside of an old quarry pit in Dorset back in 2009 during the construction of a relief road. Every last skeleton has been decapitated, with all their bodies thrown inside shallow graves and all their heads piled up to the side. It's a pretty grisly image to look at now, even if it is just a bunch of skeletons. But just imagine what it would have looked like at the time of its creation with a giant pile of 50 heads. It's absolutely gruesome. According to the Vintage News, the individuals found inside the pit would have been executed at the side of the grave, stripped naked, then beheaded. This happened sometime between AD 910 and AD 1030, meaning it was only about 1,000 years ago. The Vikings were probably executed by the local Anglo-Saxons. Unfortunately, archaeologists don't currently know why it happened, what exactly went down, or any of the finer details. But it was very likely that the Vikings were captured during a raiding attempt. Saxayawaman 
Sacsayhuaman is one of the most mysterious archaeological sites in Peru. It's believed that Sacsayhuaman was constructed by the early pre-industrial Incans. It's a complex with three tiered walls and is considered one of the most complex marvels of engineering for its time. Some of the biggest blocks used to construct this ancient place fit together so tightly that the Incans did not even need to use mortar. They essentially crafted Lego blocks that fit together like a glove, but that's not the only reason Sacsayhuaman is so impressive. Over the three sections of the remaining walls, you can see that some of these stones are of a preposterous size. It may not look that large in the photos, but it's positively huge. All the stones are square or rectangular, and there's absolutely no consistency to their exact dimension. It's as if each piece were carved custom to fit in a particular space inside the wall, which in itself would have required magnificent planning and engineering skills. Unfortunately, the rest of the complex, which could have been composed of towers, battlements, and who knows what else, was utterly destroyed by the Spanish when they conquered the nearby city of Cusco and began to basically destroy the indigenous culture of Peru like they did all over Latin America. Tomb of the Sunken Skulls the Tomb of the Sunken Skulls is an absolute enigma. It all started a few years ago when archaeologists were excavating a prehistoric lake bed in Sweden. Of course, the lake bed was dry when they started excavating it. In any case, the archaeologists stumbled upon the foundations of an ancient stone structure sealed at the bottom of the lake. After a bit of digging, they unearthed the Tomb of Sunken Skulls. Inside the small structure, they found animal bones, stone tools, and ten skulls that were 8,000 years old. It's unclear exactly what happened at the site, but an eleventh skull was later found with fragments of one of the other skulls deliberately lodged inside of it. That is some pretty nasty stuff, but it gets even worse. Researchers believe that before the eleven people were thrown inside the tomb, their bodies were staked and then they were set on fire. Could this be the oldest example of mass killings of vampires? Or is it just another example of ancient savagery? Whatever it is, this is one nasty discovery. The Origin of Apples how would you like to know where apples come from? As you probably know, before globalization and trade, certain plants, fruits, vegetables, and flowers only grew in their own personal part of the globe. Of course, now you can grow anything pretty much anywhere, but that was not always the case. If you've ever just kind of accepted that apples grow in your backyard because they're supposed to, you'd better listen up. Recent archaeological evidence is saying that apples actually began their long history in the mountains of Kazakhstan. This is one of the only places in the world that would have had apples growing naturally thousands thousands of years ago. Apples may even have been one of the rare surviving plants after the last ice age. This new fossil evidence is also saying that apples can be traced back to the original Silk Road trading routes. It's likely that farmers cultivated them initially in Kazakhstan and then traded them along the Silk Road from east to west. This is how apples became extremely popular in China as well as Europe and how they eventually made their way over to North America. Of course, this happened quite some time ago. Don't forget that Eve eats an apple in the Bible, while in the Arabian Nights, a magical apple is used to cure any illness. And even in Norse mythology, the golden apple can give a god a mortality. There's no denying the special magic of the apple, and it's pretty cool to think that it all started in just a few hills of the sparsely populated country of Kazakhstan. Badger digs up medieval burial ground. When it comes to archaeological discoveries, we usually have archaeologists to thank, but this next story is all thanks to badgers. A badger living in the countryside of Germany recently uncovered an incredible 12th century burial ground all by itself. If that's not incredible enough already, the burial ground contained at least two Slavic warlords. It all started when two sculptors who lived in the area noticed the badger digging in a peculiar spot. The sculptors went to investigate and they saw a pelvic bone sticking out of the dirt. Later, a rare archaeological dig went down and a whole lot of very cool things were discovered. They found one of the warriors was buried with a double-edged sword and a huge bronze bull at his feet. This type of bull would have been used in ancient times to wash your hands before eating. This suggests that the man buried was part of the upper class. The same warrior was also adorned with an intricate belt buckle in the shape of the Omega symbol with a snake at each end. The warrior was incredibly well equipped, whoever exactly he was. Another grave uncovered at the site contained a woman with a coin in her mouth. According to some ancient religious beliefs, people who were buried with a coin in their mouth were able to pay the mythical ferryman to transport them across the river and into the world of the dead. Tomb of the Silver Dragons 
The Tomb of the Silver Dragons was discovered in Mongolia. It's one of the most incredible archaeological discoveries ever found in the country. It was likely built for nobles of the Zayanu Empire, which thrived at a time when nomadic people dominated the Eurasian steppes between the 3rd century BC and the 1st century AD. This empire constantly was at war with the Han Dynasty of China. To defend against this Mongolian menace, China eventually built the Great Wall. The Tomb of the Silver Dragons was excavated by a special team from the Ulaanbaatar University, and it was found to contain some very cool relics from that time period. There were wooden boxes filled with silver, jade belt hooks, and a particularly valuable pair of gilded silver dragons. There were actually two tombs discovered. The smaller tomb contained a man buried with his horse-drawn carriage. 15 severed horse heads, a sword decorated with jade, and 19 silver ornaments, all of which depicted a unicorn deity. The only thing researchers don't know is who exactly the tomb belonged to. Roman Baby Disposal Baby disposal is not a pleasant topic, but it might have been quite a common thing back in the days of ancient Rome. An archaeologist named Ross Voss made a rather gruesome discovery while exploring the old seaport of Ashkelon in modern Israel. He was checking out the ruins of the city's sewer when he stumbled upon a bunch of small bones that he first thought belonged to a chicken. However, it soon became apparent that all these little bones belonged to babies, and they all dated back to the era of the Roman Empire. It's now considered to be the most significant mass grave of infants ever found on Earth, and unfortunately it could be proof that the ancient Romans were guilty of rampant baby killing. This is nothing new as it's been a theory for quite some time. Archaeologists have always suspected that Romans did some pretty nasty stuff to their babies, but now we have the physical evidence. Even though the Romans were sophisticated in a lot of ways, they had some pretty backward ideas about childbirth. They were so detached from babies that they were able to simply throw them into the sewers or just leave them outside so that they would die of exposure. They felt literally no guilt about it because they didn't think it was a crime. Of course, it could also be just that the death was thought of as part of life, and dying wasn't as big of a deal back then. This particular baby disposal was found beneath an area known as an ancient red light district. Archaeologists theorized that when the ladies of the night became pregnant, they simply carried the baby to term and then disposed of them beneath the exact same place in which they were conceived. And this is why there were so many baby bones discovered in the sewer. Very sad, but absolutely true. Which of these discoveries is the most amazing or disturbing? From the most powerful snipers of World War II all the way to the newest and most advanced weapons coming out of Russia, including an undetectable super sniper, here are 10 of the most powerful and dangerous sniper rifles ever. Chevy TAC M200 Intervention Sniper Rifle the Chevy TAC M200 Intervention is an intense, long-range weapon that can do some serious damage. It looks mean, too. This piece of weaponry is lightweight, compact, and one of the best snipers ever developed. Production began on the M200 back in 2001, and since then it has been used by militaries in Italy, Poland, Turkey, Singapore, and the UK. But it's not used by any ordinary army forces. This sniper is only used by elite military units like the Polish Grom and the British SAS. There have even been some rumors that the US Navy SEALs got their hands on a few of these bad boys. As for the gun itself, it's a manual, bolt-action sniper rifle chambered to fit a specifically designed .408 round. The cartridge utilizes a streamlined bullet with an advanced design to fire with unparalleled accuracy. When using the M200 intervention, a trained marksman can easily get their target at 6,000 feet. The bullet will even retain its supersonic velocity up to the point of of impact, but despite how incredibly accurate the M200 is as a long-range weapon, it's not exactly that popular. This is likely because there aren't many missions in which soldiers need to be shooting targets from 6,000 feet. Orsus T5000 Sniper Rifle the Orsus T5000 sniper rifle is the deadliest weapon you have never heard of. This highly advanced sniper rifle has reportedly been used by Russian sniper squadrons during the fighting in eastern Ukraine with entire groups operating as long-range marksmen to hold a targeted area. This is devastating as the Orsus T5000 is a weapon that, when placed in skilled hands, can have deadly results. This is a weapon that came about during the rapid modernization of the Russian armed forces in the late 2000s. It's a bolt-action sniper rifle that comes in a variety of different calibers like 308 Winchester or 300 Winchester Magnum. 
These are calibers known for providing incredible accuracy at long distances. From just a few thousand yards away, a team of snipers can easily lock down an entire village or town, assuming they have a clean line of sight. From such a position, the snipers and their Orsus T5000 rifles can restrict all enemy movement and wait for artillery fire. This is a serious upgrade in Russian hardware. And now for number 8, but first let me know if you've ever used a rifle like these in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you are new here. Barrett M82 Sniper Rifle for a long time, the M82 sniper rifle has been at the top of the pile. This weapon system revolutionized the field of military sniping nearly 40 years ago. The Barrett M82 was the first ever rifle to use a massive 50 caliber round. Before this rifle, the 50 caliber rounds were used primarily with heavy machine guns. Nobody actually believed that such a monstrous round could be fired with any kind of accuracy, never mind with the flawless precision of the M82. But of course, Ronnie Barrett in the 1980s designed, developed, and built the M82 anyway. The result was a ridiculously strong sniper rifle that could take out any target from at least 2,000 yards away. The original M82 was about 57 inches long, its barrel was 29 inches, and the entire weapon weighed around 28 pounds. But where the M82 really impressed was with its energy. It could easily shoot an M33.50 BMG bullet with a velocity of 2,750 FPS, delivering an unheard of 11,169 foot-pounds of energy. This is compared to the measly 1,330 foot-pounds of energy from a little 5.56 round. Suffice to say, military agents all over the world were basically clawing over themselves to get their hands on the M82, and since then it has remained an extremely popular weapon in both pop culture, video games, and the field of combat. Accuracy International AW50 Sniper Rifle if you want a heavy-duty sniper rifle that can penetrate armor and rule the battlefield, you probably want the Accuracy International AW50 Anti-Material Rifle. This is an absolute beast of a weapon. In fact, it's in the same impressive league as other heavy battlefield rifles like the Barrett M82 that we just talked about. The big difference with the AW50 is that it's designed specifically for engaging armored convoys. This sniper can blast through armor, through shielding, through brick walls, and all other manner of barrier at a whopping distance of over one mile away or even more depending on your skill level as a marksman. And even though the AW50 is a raw killing machine with brutal power, it's actually quite manageable to use with minimal rearwards or upwards movements between successive shots. However, this gun was only produced back in 1999 and it uses a manually actuated bolt action system. This means every shot needs to count as the operator must eject each shell casing and manually insert a new round into the firing chamber. Still, when shooting from up to 1.5 miles away, each shot had better count. L96A1 Sniper Rifle The accuracy of the L96A1 Sniper Rifle from Accuracy International is legendary. This is the current preferred method of sniping for the British Army. The weapon comes featured with an adjustable butt, an adjustable bipod, and iron sights if you're feeling brave. But of course it also comes standard with a 6x42 Schmidt & Bender scope, according to Military Factory. This weapon is a bit older, only coming to life in the middle of the 1980s, but that doesn't mean it can't do some serious damage. The weapon is designed to have pinpoint accuracy at around 2,000 feet while maintaining cover fire from over 3,500 feet away. This weapon is designed to fire a 7.62x52mm NATO cartridge from a 10-round mag. The muzzle velocity when firing around is an incredible 2,790 feet per second, and if that feels a little too light duty for you, there is indeed a military version of this gun available that fires .50 caliber rounds. Springfield Model 1903 Let's take a step back in time for a second to the M1903 Springfield, the service rifle used by standard infantry units throughout World War I, World War II, and parts of the Korean War and Vietnam War. While the Springfield Model 1903 is certainly not the most powerful sniper today, considering it dates back to the late 1800s, it was the most powerful back then. After much trial and error, and following what other countries at the time were doing, the USA eventually developed the 150 grain cartridge known as the .3006, and paired the cartridge with the American Mauser development rifle designed as the M1903. The rifle took on the name M1903 Springfield because of the armory where it was developed. Of course, throughout the years, many improvements were added to the M1903, even the Remington Arms Company tweaked things here and there. In 1929, there was a special target version of the gun manufactured that formally introduced a pistol grip in the design of the body. 
muzzle velocity increased over time until it reached 2,800 feet per second. During World War II, it was tweaked into a sniper rifle capable of hitting a target from 2,500 yards off. It was used during the D-Day fighting at Normandy, but ultimately, this legendary sniper rifle exited military service in 1974 after nearly 100 years of triumphs. Mosin Nagant Model 1891-30 Sniper Rifle Let's move over to the Russians' earliest sniper rifle. The Mosin Nagant Model 1891 bolt action rifle was the preferred weapon by the Soviets during World War II. The weapon first entered Russian service in 1892, where it was used standard in the Russo Japanese War and World War I. Then it was improved and modified by the Red Army during the 1930s. Gunsmiths managed to add a telescopic sight, allowing soldiers to hit targets up to around 2,000 feet away. But the quality still was not the best, and sometimes the wooden stocks would warp during changes in the weather. But despite its shortcomings, this rifle was rugged and accurate. In the hands of the Russians, it was a real murder machine, and even though the Soviets did develop the Tokarev SVT-40 for use as a sniper rifle, the Mosin Nagant Model 1891 was still better. It remained in use until replaced by the Dragunov SVD in 1963, according to HistoryNet. MTS-116M Silent Sniper Rifle Moving on with the Russians, back in 2018 they developed the world's first silent sniper rifle and displayed it at the Russia's Army Expo. The MTS-116M suppressed sniper rifle is a real advancement in weapons technology. According to Popular Mechanics, it's designed specifically to hide the noise and the muzzle flash, making operators pretty much invisible while firing. This is absolutely one of the deadliest and most advanced sniper rifles ever created. The MTS-116M has been around for at least 25 years, offering a range of over 2,300 feet to accurately hit a target. But this newer version adds a new depth to the fighting. Since most firefights involve shooting at flashes and sounds, if your team does not produce these flashes or sounds, the enemy has nothing to fire back at. Using these snipers can turn a whole squadron of trained fighters into ghosts, especially with the right cover. They are most widely used in modern irregular warfare like insurgencies inside of Middle Eastern countries, specifically Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan. This is because in urban situations, firing the MTS-116M is virtually undetectable. It makes this one of the best modern weapons of war. The ZKZM-500 Laser Rifle when you think about the weapons of the future, you probably think laser weapons. Well, guess what? China supposedly has a destructive laser rifle that has a sniping capability of up to 0.5 miles in range. The weapon is known as the ZKZM-500, and it consists of a laser and a lithium battery. It was reportedly developed by the Xi'an Institute of Optics and Precision Mechanics. The rifle only weighs about 6 pounds, it has a full range of 2600 feet, and it uses its lithium battery to fire off a maximum of 1000 shots on a single charge. However, it's not that deadly. The laser can supposedly scar human tissue or ignite clothing, but it can't blow a hole in you just yet. The main use is likely for crowd control, as the laser could be used to sweep across a crowd of protesters and cause them intense pain rather than lighting them on fire. This is just the first step to a world ruled by laser warfare. Russian Super Sniper T-5000 the new Russian T-5000 is a force to be reckoned with. This weapon is part of a new generation of warfare far more advanced than anything any other country has come up with. The T-5000 uses 388 Magnum ammo to deliver 5,000 foot-pounds of energy. This is about double what the previous Dragunov snipers could accomplish. Production began in 2011 using better materials and better optics to drastically improve quality. Whereas with most snipers an operator can be relatively accurate from 2,000 yards, the T-5000 allows operators to be deadly accurate at the same distance. This means that any skilled marksman can pretty much always hit their target at 2,000 yards. So far, it's been reported by popular mechanics that the weapon has been used only in Iraq and Ukraine, and is being utilized primarily by the Russian Army and the Russian Federal Security Service, which used to be the KGB. A giant boat, the Batmobile, and a pair of failed Soviet space shuttles are just some of the 10 coolest abandoned vehicles we're about to look at. The World Discoverer First on the list for today of the coolest abandoned vehicles ever is the World Discoverer. 
This ocean liner has been sitting on its side, half sunk ever since 2000. It was once a cruise ship that went all across the world, navigating the 8,000 miles of the Northwest Passage with ease. But after an unfortunate meeting with an uncharted reef, the boat met its end. Everyone on board was safely evacuated, but the ship did not make it when the captain ran it aground at Roderick Bay in the Solomon Islands. To this day, nobody has been able to get the ship off the reef, and now it's become a tourist destination. A few salvage companies have tried to retrieve the ship, but unfortunately it's already being ransacked by locals and is basically useless. Plus, all the tidal activity has damaged the structure beyond repair, and all the rusting makes it nothing but a large pile of garbage. To retrieve the vessel now would be way more trouble than it's worth, and so the ship will likely remain slowly crumbling into the ocean as an oddly beautiful display in this tropical place. Porsche 911 Race Car Nobody should ever let a Porsche 911 race car fall into such disrepair. This particular vehicle is a 1987 Porsche 911 race car that seems to have been sitting for an excruciatingly long time and is in desperate need of a full restoration. As of 2020, the car was put on sale on the Facebook marketplace for only $12,500. The dealership selling this car told Road & Track that it was found sitting at a ranch outside of Houston completely abandoned. Alongside the Porsche was a 2008 911 GT3 Cup car. From the photo evidence, it appears that the Porsche was once a NASA club racer before it was forgotten and left to dry in the hot Texas sun. The car is obviously not in great shape, with tons of rust clearly visible in the photos, but the engine still appears to be intact, which could mean that with enough money, the Porsche could be restored to its former glory. The car still has a roll cage, it still has the harnesses, and it still has an aftermarket tachometer. Nonetheless, this wouldn't be an easy project to undertake. It's just a sad sight to see such a classic race car sitting in such disrepair and being sold for such a small price. The Ultimate Airplane Boneyard Let's take a look at the ultimate airplane boneyard. According to a report from ABC News, the largest airplane graveyard on the planet is located in Tucson, Arizona. Popularly known as the Boneyard, this airplane graveyard is formally known as the 309th AMARG, or Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group. The facility is used to store all the excess military and government aircrafts. That means that in this graveyard, you can find abandoned jets, helicopters, planes, and even space shuttles all belonging to the Air Force, the Navy, the Coast Guard, NASA, and the Marine Corps. The site is literally filled with the coolest aircrafts in the world, all of them completely left to collect nothing but dust. There are apparently 500 people employed at the Boneyard, tasked with taking care of the over 4,000 abandoned aircraft that make the Boneyard their permanent residence. The good news is that you can actually visit this place, check out the abandoned YC-15, the Japanese MH-53E helicopter, and much more. Toyota Supra Sitting abandoned in Japan is a completely genuine 1999 Toyota Supra GT500 JG TC race car. As reported by Top Gear, the car has been abandoned for at least 15 years and has turned into the most expensive flower bed in the world. It can be found sitting outside of a local repair shop crowded with flowers as it gradually rusts away. Apparently, after the 99 racing season, nobody wanted this car. It was too complex to run, too expensive to own, and too much of a burden. So the owners of the small repair shop managed to pick it up for free. Ever since, they have been using it to catch the eye of potential customers outside their main office. It has sat undisturbed for almost two decades. The tires are flat, the paint is faded, and the rust has set in nicely. Interestingly enough, even though the small garage has been approached several times over the years by people who wanted to buy the car, with some of them offering ridiculous amounts of money, they always refuse to sell it. It turns out that the small family who got this amazing piece of racing memorabilia for free is happier having it as an ornament in their yard than as money in their bank account. Abandoned Naval Submarine it doesn't get much cooler than finding an abandoned naval submarine. Well, a Dutch urban explorer named Bob visited a submarine abandoned by Portugal's navy. Bob spent 12 hours inside the submarine filming his claustrophobic adventure to upload online. He even took a nap in one of the narrow bunks. The vehicle has been sitting moored at a naval base in Lisbon for somewhere around 10 years now, but even though it's abandoned, it's still filled with all kinds of cool stuff. First, Bob climbed down the access hatch in the middle of the night after sneaking into the facility, and then he explored all the cool gadgets and dials inside the vessel. Among the cool artifacts discovered were chess pieces and the famous game Mastermind. It looks like the people who worked on the submarine needed exciting ways to spend their time. The submarine's proper name is the Delphim, and in its prime it cruised the waters armed with 12 torpedoes and a crew of at least 50 people. 
but the Delphim's usefulness ran out in the 1990s and for over a decade it has been abandoned and left to rot. Abandoned Yacht Staying in Europe, let's head over to the coast of Albania. According to the local media there, authorities discovered an abandoned yacht that they believe was being used for the smuggling of illegal drugs. The yacht had a Slovenian flag on it and was named Taipan. The authorities figured that the owner was an Italian national, but when they found the boat there, was nobody on board. Its anchors were deployed, and the police kept the yacht under strict observation to see if anyone would show up so that they could arrest them. They suspected the boat had been used for drug smuggling, mostly because a speedboat was also found nearby. It's likely that the drugs were taken off the yacht and then transported to land using a speedboat. This is quite often how illegal substances get into Europe, although why the boat was abandoned is anybody's guess. Oddly enough, this is quite similar to an incident that happened in 2019 when a Turkish national abandoned his boat in the same area. The Turkish fella in question has yet to be apprehended. Russian Tanks on Shikotan Island on a small island that once belonged to Japan, there is a small platoon of armored tanks slowly disappearing into the grass. The island is known as Shikotan Island, and the tanks have been abandoned since the early 90s when the Soviet Union came undone. Back in the 1940s, the island belonged to Japan. It was where Japanese ships assembled for the secret operation to attack Pearl Harbor. Later on, between 1943 and 1945, Japan bolstered their strength on the islands only to have American attacks tie down their forces in the north. After the Soviet Union declared war on Japan in 1945, Russian forces landed on the islands and took them over. The Japanese lost, and in 1951, they gave up the islands to Russia and have yet to get them back. The Batmobile if you ever wondered what happened to the Batmobile after the Dark Knight movies finished being made, you simply need to look to Dubai. The original and authentic Batmobile from the Chris Nolan movies is currently sitting in a garage in Dubai. Apparently, the two fellas who found it thought it didn't even look remotely as cool as it did on the screen. What happened was that after the movies finished filming, a man from Dubai purchased the vehicle for just shy of $1 million from Hollywood. And while it's not exactly abandoned, it's not exactly in great shape either. It had to be decommissioned in the United States before it was sent across the planet, which means all the systems that made it work had to be taken out. The reason that the Batmobile was purchased at all is apparently because the owner is planning to put all the original systems back in so that the vehicle can be driven, and the guy is also working on a fire-breathing exhaust system so that the vehicle can spit flames just like it did in the movie. For now though, the car is sitting unused in a rich guy's garage. Interestingly enough, Christopher Nolan actually requested this specific Batmobile to be designed based on his idea. It was constructed in the United Kingdom with at least seven or eight prototypes being dismissed before the final version was put into the film. Soviet Space Shuttles Take a trip to Kazakhstan and you could find two abandoned Soviet space shuttles. It's one thing to find an abandoned airplane or an abandoned tank, but to find an abandoned spacecraft is like a dream come true. These space shuttles were designed during the Cold War, but after just one flight, the entire program was basically scrapped. However, nobody ever thought to throw the space shuttles away. There are still two of them sitting in a disused hangar, completely abandoned near the launch pad where the first failed Soviet spacecraft took flight. The actual launch pad is still an active spaceport, which sends astronauts to the International Space Station. But the hangar with the abandoned space shuttles is located a little way off and is in serious disrepair. A French photographer visited the site between 2015 and 2017, and he captured some pretty fantastic images of the unfinished and oddly depressing space vehicles. The shuttles are extremely similar to the original United States model, which is not that surprising considering the USSR had pretty much cloned whatever piece of technology the Americans invented. Even the paint job of white and black on the disused space shuttle is pretty much the same as what the Americans came up with first. Bugatti Veyron Our last story also involves Russia. A Bugatti Veyron was found completely forgotten and abandoned in an undisclosed location in Russia. And the story behind it is a little odd and not entirely convincing. Supposedly, the Veyron was involved in an accident in early 2013 when it was hit by an Aston Martin. Rather than repair the Veyron or deal with the insurance, it was actually cheaper to just ditch it. While the full details of the story are vague and unconfirmed, there are legit photos of the Veyron with its back end totally demolished, sitting outside what looks to be a mechanic shop. If the guy really did abandon the vehicle, the towing company who picked it up probably got to keep it free of charge. That would be just about one of the best scores a towing company could make. After all, what kind of maniac just leaves a Bugatti abandoned because of a little fender bender? 
If you could restore one of these awesome abandoned vehicles, which one would you choose? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe for all the best videos. See you again soon. What is the most expensive car that you have ever driven or driven in?